Probably a, it's one of the tougher trips I think you have in college football to go play a game, you know, on the West Coast. And I thought our kids handled it well. I thought they played with great energy and passion and togetherness, and and they fought for the 60 minutes. And um, obviously, extremely happy to uh, get out of there, you know, with a win against another Power Five opponent. And I think I saw a stat somewhere that teams that turn the ball over four times plus the number of first downs we had. I think it's like one in 65 or something, and now it's two in 66, I guess. Or That could be wrong on the numbers. Don't quote me on that. But um, it seemed a pretty, pretty – you just don't win many games like that. And so um, we're very fortunate. And But I know this. Um, I don't know that I've ever had a season where you didn't have a game where you felt like, God, we easily could have lost that game, but boy, our kids found a way and you can build on stuff like that. And i um, just really proud of our staff and kids. I don't think anyone quit believing that we could win the game and it showed in the way they played. And obviously the defense had more than their share of, uh, of, of times that they had to go back out there and too quick and um, because of the number of turnovers and lack of production on third down. Um, and, man, they never once. It was always, we got you, we got you, we got you. And I'm um, just really proud of that growth um, that we can use to, to build on for sure. And obviously they played, you know, really well on that side of the ball. And the special teams played uh, better than average but to not great, but better than average. Offense was uh, awful. And, you know, we got the ball in the third quarter. Um, I don't know how many minutes were left, but our first possession in the third quarter, we had only had 25 offensive plays. And I do believe we had a really good plan offensively, particularly in the second half, and think we would have scored points had we not turned it over two more times. But we only had four possessions, and, um, you know, those turnovers are just – you can't win football games turning the ball over. And thought we were ripping off some pretty good runs and either had a penalty or a turnover for those few possessions that we had the second half. So um, I think there's some things we can build on for sure, but ultimately the bottom line is our kids found a way to win. And we celebrate that, and you can write it however you want to write it, but the bottom line is uh, Auburn Tigers are 2-0, and and we celebrate that. Coach, all offseason you talked about it through the fall and even through the season as it started. Robbie Ashford was going to be a huge part of, of your team's success. We saw a heavy dosage of him on Saturday night flipping back and forth between him and Peyton Thorne. What was their response, Peyton and Robbie's response, and their just their attitude towards both of them seeing heavy minutes on Saturday? Yeah, I haven't seen them uh, and talked to them uh, today yet, and obviously everybody's on the plane ride was just uh, trying to rest, and uh, they both seem fine. I, I don't know that that's exactly what I want it to look like, but we just had no juice, no momentum, and, and so you're kind of searching for it. And, um, you know, we've got to figure that, that piece of it out to where you're not, uh, you know, we need, we need Peyton to play better, truthfully, too. Now, the last drive, he played well. Uh, prior to that, I think a few of the throws were inaccurate. And I thought he left the pocket early once. And look, I'm not beating up Peyton. He played really well that last possession, but we do need more consistency there throughout the whole game. And that's our challenge is to get uh, him or, and uh, Robbie and, and uh, Holden to, to that point. Um, and so they know that, but, you know, Robbie's got to get his touches. And we had a really good package for him. And, had a good drive going in that package, and then uh, one of our running backs went the wrong way, and it created a negative play and got us behind the chains. And so it was just uh, one thing after another offensively, which ultimately, you know, it has to start with me and our offensive staff as to why we, you know, did some of the things we did. Um, you know, we don't control the fumbles necessarily, but – there were other things that happened that caused us negative plays that, um, you know, maybe we need to coach better. Right, 
Well, you can talk too. Uh, one of the things you've talked about is, is taking shots downfield. You didn't do much of that Saturday. Was that by design? Was it something Cal was doing or was it uh, just the ineffectiveness doing it? Well, Cal was, uh, we, we, I think we only called three and probably should have called more. Um, but it was uh, Cal, you know, played us a little differently. But there were times that we, I thought, had early in the game, I know we had one real shot and, you know, we chose, we read a different side of the field. Um, and then our receivers didn't win a few of the others that we called. They were in man coverage quite a bit. And um, they, they won some of those battles on us. Coach, after the first game, you mentioned some of the defensive alignment issues. How did you work on that? And were you pleased with the progress they made in week two? We definitely made progress. It was, uh, it was much better. Um, the effort was incredible. Lows were way, way down. Um, we still have some alignment issues. Um, but I mean, every game you're going to have some. Um, I would like for it to be in the single digits. Um, I think we were around 10. Um, but they weren't, I mean, you know, some of them were being really ticky-tack and hard. You know, you're, 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 you should be lined up in a 30 technique and you're, and you're not quite there at linebacker. So we're being really hard on, on that right now. But um, so some of them were pretty insignificant. And there were others that could have been significant. And again, you, you're not going to ever completely change that because the offenses are going to throw something at you that you didn't prepare for or some motion or some shift. Um, we just got to make sure we're all on the same page when that occurs. And there were a few of those in the early in the second half that we, we were still trying to figure that out as the ball is being snapped. So we've got to, we got to continue to work on it, but it was much better. Coach, you've, uh, you've chosen to give up give up play calling for the first time in your career. Um, how would you characterize what we saw on offense Saturday? Was it more play calling or was it more on the execution side? And did you take over play calling at 80 point during that game? No, I, I called three things in that game and uh, it's, it's hard. I'm not going to lie. And, you know, I, I don't want to make some, I have great confidence in that, in our staff. And, um, you know, one game is not um, something that you should, particularly when you have four turnovers and the number of penalties we had that, that got us behind the chains. I just think that I know y'all don't, I'm not making any excuses because we have to own what's on the film, but when you turn it over four times and you don't get a lot of possessions in a game, it's, uh, it's hard. And, and that's kind of where we were. And every time we got, did get an explosive want run on the reverse or something, there's another penalty. And, we did everything that we didn't do in the first game. We didn't have turnovers. We didn't have penalties. And dang, if we didn't uh, look like it was the first game offensively. And so um, I, I did not take it over. I did call the, the fade to Rivaldo and um, a couple other things. But um, no, it's not at that point at all. I, I have great confidence in them. We, we've had a lot of tough talks this morning and, um, you know, I can't be everywhere, and but ultimately I own, have to own everything. And I spent a lot of time with our defensive guys last week, and going to spend a lot of time with our offensive guys this week. And um, but it's really not. A, it's it's about us all seeking wisdom as to how we can get better, me included. And you know that was our our main theme this morning in our in our truth meeting is man, what how, how do you seek wisdom to get better and to improve? the chances our kids have, have have of winning football games and being better men and, you know, what does that look like for you and who do you have and we've got to have each other and everybody's got assistance in this building, assistant O-line coaches, D-line coaches, safety coaches, quarterback coaches and it's high time that nobody has an ego and we all like, all right, how can we, what are we, are we doing too much of something and what can we do and who needs the touches? And, you know, like five and six for us need more touches. Um, those two guys can – they're our best receivers. Now, I wish they were bigger because the catch rate is, is, is not, not big. But um, – and we got to improve the others. But those guys are, are pretty good in space. And so we've got to use those guys. More Rivaldo obviously needs to be utilized, and he was well in the second half. But – um, we, we've got to, we got to play to our strengths and figure out how to make it look different every week. And, 
Um, so those are some of the things I challenged them with this morning is, you know, how are you going to do that? And if you need help, I swear I can help. I'll, I'll draw them up and, and, and show you how to make it look different. But they have the ability to do that. And so, um, again, I think it's a you don't, you know, I know you guys have to, I mean, it was ugly. There's no two ways around it, but you can't, you also have to take into account the number of turnovers and penalties for possessions versus was it just awful play calls. I don't, I didn't see many awful play calls, truthfully. They all have a chance to work. Nothing schematically was off about it. Um, I think we need a little more balance and we got to figure out what that looks like exactly that our quarterbacks and receivers can handle. Um, in our RPO world, we didn't utilize near enough. We've got to work on that. So uh, we'll, we'll challenge each other to be better this week as coaches and players. It's on, on the point of a, of a play calling, when you talk to Philip about that, as you mentioned, like, is what does that look like going forward now? As you were saying, it was hard to keep yourself from calling more plays at, the, at that we're point. Not, uh, nothing, no, we're not overreacting to anything. I have great trust in him. We're going to work together this week on the game plan. And, um, you know, and obviously he, he didn't have an ego. He didn't care if I step in and, and, and call it. But uh, I need to probably be in more meetings. And uh, like I said last week, we were really – that game went nothing like I expected. I just got to tell you. It, it was nothing like I expected, and uh, um, which is good and bad, I guess. Um, so we we worked really hard on how do we come up with the right defensive plan for our guys, and how do we handle the tempo? And heck, if they didn't go much tempo at all, really, I mean, they went a few plays, but nothing like what I'm used to from uh, from Spavital. And um, we never got in our tempo hardly at all because we never were efficient enough on first down to, to get in it. And it just was totally uh, different than what I expected. Um, but again, now Philip is going to be fine. And, uh, but yeah, we're going to work together this week and see if we can't get a great plan in place uh, to, to, to not repeat last week's uh, performance. How do you think Peyton did with his decision making specifically in the, in the RPOs that you guys called? I know that was something from we week didn't one. call enough. We didn't call enough RPOs, so I can't say Peyton was uh, that was him. I just think he was inconsistent uh, with the early throws that we had, um, and that really continued. Again, third quarter we didn't have the ball very much, or the fourth quarter, truthfully. So, um, you know, the last drive is one we're going to choose to concentrate on and focus on, and and see if we can't uh, build on that. But uh, it was inconsistent until that point. When you look at, <clears throat> look at this defense, how much have they progressed since the start of this preseason? And then just talk about the job your, your staff has done in trying to fill pieces, because you've had some injuries on that side, and they just kind of yeah, keep plugging it in. Was, uh, it was a little scary the second half. You know, we had um, Keontae out and uh, Simpson out to start third quarter, which – um, we already had Pritchett out who couldn't play. And so you're playing a lot of young guys that uh, hadn't had a ton of reps. And so that – and Keontae was out until the last drive, truthfully, the whole, the whole second half. So – and then DK went out. So we were uh, greatly challenged. Nixon dinged his hand there, his wrist that he had surgery on. And we're thin at linebacker, really thin. Um, and so it was, uh, it was quite a challenge. So really proud of our kids and the staff. They just kept battling and finding a way to get off the field and get important stops. Um, did we improve from week one to week two? Absolutely. Now, are, are, we, are we fixed yet and, and ready to say we're fist and dominate and hold every opponent to 10 points? I would like to say that, but that's not, that's not accurate. We've got to keep working because uh, tougher tests are coming. Uh, do you expect those guys like Donovan and Pritchett back this week? Some of the guys that you mentioned. You know, I, it's too early to tell, I think, on both. Um, I would love to hope that they both would be ready to go for sure, but it's, it's too too early to tell. We'd love to get, we're without J.D. Rhyme so far, too, this year, and I think he could help us. So, you know, but it's, it's too early on Monday to tell. 
Yeah, I want to ask you about Kay and Lee. I mean, he played a lot of snaps the other day, and he played a lot better than he did against UMass. Are you seeing him kind of step it up? Yeah, and there's, you know, we think he's going to be really talented. He's really talented. He's going to be really good. He's just young. There's times I think he's still a little uh, unsure about his confidence level and, and, and gives too much ground. There were a couple of those in the game. And obviously the 15-yard uh, penalty we don't need. That was, that was uh, critical at that juncture. But uh, did he play well? Yes. Um, he still can get better, yes. But uh, God, we're glad we have him. You know, we're, we're really thin back there right now. Uh, yes, you, you mentioned uh, playing Jay Fair and, and Varmore together. Uh, do you think Fair is more uh, built to play on the outside, or do you think it's the other way around? Uh, I don't think either are built to play outside, truthfully. But um, obviously, unless you get in uh, 10 personnel, um, there's one of them will have to if, if you're going to play them both at the same time. And so I, I don't know if I said that. I, I said they need to get more touches. Now, what is, does that look like them playing more at the same time? Maybe. We've got to figure that out uh, this week for sure or today. Thank you. Two questions, if I may, but first one, just in your coaching experience, a win like this in an adverse situation, how does that pay dividends later in the season? And then secondly, just looking ahead to Samford, curious if you have any relationship with Chris Hatcher and what you know about the Bulldogs. Yeah, the, uh, you, there's no question. You're very uh, sharp with the question because you a win like that, that's a tough trip. And um, I won't go on Thursday again if we ever have to do that again. And that trip back is really, really, really hard. I mean, we rolled in here at 10 o'clock yesterday morning. And um, I don't know that you can recover immediately in the next week for that. But I think there's so much to build on because I really – I'm still learning this team. They're still learning me. And I was so pleased of the way – it just was no uh, panic. There was um, – it was just we're going to figure this out somehow, some way, and, and get out of here with a win. And – not every team in year one have I felt could handle that, and I wasn't sure about our kids, truthfully, and I really thought we are going to go in there and score 30, 40 points and, and make it easy on the defense, and Lord knows that didn't happen, and I was so proud of just the leadership on that side of the ball that just, we got you. And Eugene Asante played his tail off, and um, as did others. I don't want to get to pointing them out, but he played really well. Jalen McLeod makes us different when he's playing. So there's so much to build on from that because we're going to have some adverse situations in this league, uh, particularly at the point we are in our program. And so we can point back to these moments of how you should fight to the end, irregardless of what the result ends up being. That's the way we should keep fighting. So I think that's, uh, yeah, Hatcher and I have known each other for years. I, I mean, I think he's one of the better offensive coaches in football. He's done a remarkable job there, and he will have his kids excited and well prepared to play here, I have no doubt. And they'll test you in the passing game for sure and throw it all around. I know there's, I think the last time he played here, I believe it was here. Um, I know I watched the film somehow, but I think it was here. But man, it was every polecat and uh, quads and every formation you can imagine. Um, that, uh, that he pulled out and had success moving the ball. And so um, I have great respect for him as a man and as a coach. And, um, you know, I know he'll, he'll have his guys ready. When it comes to your, your run defense, how did you see them respond based off of what wasn't a great performance in week one against UMass plus the outside chatter from, from your opponent? How did you see that run defense respond on Saturday and moving forward uh, for Sanford this week? Well, uh, the stats are what they are, and so they performed and they, they, they stopped the run. And so we absolutely improved from week one to week two in that. And I don't know that that has any bearing on what you do in week three. You better prepare the same way and you better have a great plan and, um, and, and know you've got to do it again and again and again. And, um, but we did absolutely felt like we had to stop the run and make them one-dimensional. We weren't sure that either quarterback um, could all night long throw it and, and, and beat us. Um, I said, wasn't sure. I'm not saying they couldn't. Uh, but it wasn't enough tape to really, but we kind of just, 
you know, when you look at two transfer guys and they didn't, they weren't used to throw it at their old school, you kind of just hope in your mind that uh, that that's a, a situation where maybe they they can't throw it well enough to beat you. So let's be sure we've we've got to stop the run because they had really talented running backs, and um, I thought our get, kids did a great job of doing that. Coach, you mentioned getting five and six more touches. What, what about the rest of the wide receiver rumor? Are you expecting more production out of the other guys too? Well, you sure hope so. Well, we haven't proved we can do it yet. So until we do, I mean, we've got to, we've got to prove that we can win some one-on-ones and we can throw accurate balls to them. And, um, you know, we've got to keep improving that room. I've said that since I've got here, and that's still the, the, the case. <clears throat> Coach, the, uh, the Cal running back, the young guy, Jaden Knott, gave you guys what well, might be a little bit of bulletin board material before this one. Uh, we had heard that maybe they had used that for some motivation. How much do you use those kind of things to motivate your team going into a matchup like this? I, I, I honestly don't really use that a lot. I think if that's – now, I heard our kids talking about it, which I don't think that hurt, and I hope he's okay. I know he got hurt. and um, But, you know, I – I don't like our kids to do that. <laughs> I hope ours don't ever um, for games because it did probably fire our guys up a little bit defensively. And um, I did mention it in, in my pregame um, talk. I was comparing it to one of my real life experiences with a, with a, with a guy in high school. And uh, I did use that in pregame, but I don't think that's the reason we stopped the run. But it certainly did give them some motivation for sure. How did you feel like the offensive line did in the game on Saturday? Yeah, I thought they did fine, truthfully, and that's the shame of it. Um, I thought they handled uh, the movements and stuff really well. There was one breakdown in protection. Um, the others I think we kind of caused with either setting the protection wrong or moving out of the pocket too early. Um, but I, I think, again, without the turnovers, I think you're looking at another 250-yard plus rushing night. And um, so I thought they, they, they were doing a fine job of run blocking. You talked about getting McLeod back. What, what did it add to the defense and then how much of a boost is that moving forward having that speed off the edge? I think he's probably 85%. I'd like for him to get to 100%. Um, and then I think he really gives us a boost, but he, at 85%, he's, he's made us better. He's uh, strong at the point of attack, quick twitched, and can rush the passer. I, didn't, I don't think he got a sack the other night, I don't think, but he's, uh, he's, he's, he's different than, than what we've been presenting. So he helps us all the way around. Yeah, a question about the quarterback rotation. I mean, if you're trying to unlock more consistency, wouldn't it make sense to kind of pick a guy and stick with him? Or do you like yeah, this rotational that, thing? That's a big challenge. I do not like the, the way the other night went um, with it. But at the same time, I think Robbie has to get his touches. And so that's a, that is a absolute something that's on my mind, and we've got to figure it out. All right, Coach. Thank yep. You. Thank you all.